Hello, dear viewer. You join us at an exciting time. We are literally days off of our public debut, mm -hmm. the Last Starship, into Next Fest. Next Fest is new for us. It's a new thing. Last time we launched a game, there was no Next Fest. More Ch on things change rapidly, don't they, in the games industry? Yeah. Well, I think Next Fest is about three years old now. <laughs> <laughs> We just haven't done shit for years. <laughs> we're just we're just so slow. Yeah. But um, I say we're slow, but we've got some exciting things to look at. So Last Starship is a ship building game. Mm. So I think you've done some work on building ships. On on the ship editor. Should we have a look? Ship editor. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, we found we found um, a common request amongst people that are playtesting the game currently because we are in playtest, so there are people playing the game behind the scenes. And a very common request is a, a, in a creative mode for the game where they're free to build starships of any size or scope without limit. Right. Um, and so this we have done. Should we have a look? So cool. So cool. You know, I remember discussions with you when you weren't sure if people were even going to want to do that. Yeah. I remember I know. that. You know, you said, I'm not even sure if people are going to want to build their own ships. And I was thinking quietly on the inside, are you crazy? <laughs> I think we're at one point we were, we were just going to provide like four or five different starship holes, weren't we? And then you were just going to yeah. make do with that. But no, it turns out people actually do want to edit ships, create ships, build their own ships. Um, so if we go to creative mode and click on create new ship, we will start from a blank slate. There Ooh. it is. It's exciting, isn't it? There's our slate. That's it. And here's our creative mode. But you say that, but you've got that. There's a blue line and yeah. a white arrow. And it feels like... Apple-esque design. Apple-esque. You know we, what I mean? It's we've like, completely you... reconsidered what it means <laughs> to be a ship editor. We've exactly. rebuilt the ship editor from the ground up, making the world a better place through a, <laughs> yeah. through a functional symmetry line. Behold, the blue line. How long do you think we can spend in this video looking at this blue line? I mean, we... It, we could, we could be watching jobs. the view figures now going down and down and 40, down. 45 minutes, 45 yeah. minutes. I, yeah. I do think the symmetry line is, is I do think it, it's a... Oh, it's uh, beautiful, isn't it? I think it's just really clever. Mm. You know, it's the kind of thing that, you know, when it's now it's there, you just sort of take it for granted. It's obvious. But actually, yeah, yeah. because one of, the, one of the difficulties we had with this, you know, coming with our prison architect background, is the ships, you wanted to have a way in which the players were kind of, I don't know, nudged is probably the word, toward designing things in the game that mm. looked like spaceships, right? Yes. That, that yeah. didn't look like big, flat rooms yeah. stamped down and connected yeah. by corridors, right? That's where we started. Yeah, I didn't want to have, I didn't want people flying their prison around, you know, because yeah. prison layouts are just like big, sprawling campuses, you know, on a, in a desert somewhere. Um, and spaceships don't look like that and shouldn't look like that. And, you know... I think we had a lot of debate, didn't we, about whether we were, whether it was going to be modular or whether you're going to like have That's a right. fixed ship and you would just glue modules on the side and then glue more modules on it. It'd be really controlled, or whether you would just be freeform. Um, and we've sort of ended up like somewhere in the middle, haven't we? <laughs> you know, usually the way, right? Yeah. Thesis, antithesis, middle thesis. <laughs> That's right. Synth synthesis. <laughs> so, we, we've, so we've gone the synthesis -sy 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 route. <laughs> And, yeah. um, and in that route, we have creative mode where you're free to do whatever you want. Like, there's no limits in this mode. There's no financial element to this, right? I can go and make enormous ships immediately if I want to. Um, and then in the game mode itself, the same ship editor is there. I'll show you later. But the same ship editor yeah. is there. But now it's more economically driven. And now you need metals and you need money and you need a shipyard in order to perform yeah. modifications on your ship. So it's kind of integrated into the game, but also a bit more gaming, yeah, yeah. bit more, bit more. Because I think it's two different things, isn't it? Some players just want to noodle away and design ships, um, and yeah. other and other players love playing the game and exploring and, and fighting and mining and doing all that stuff. Um, so you know, who are we to say you can be one but not the other? Yeah, absolutely. Nobody, We're not going to put you in a box. <laughs> nobody puts us in a box. So what can we do in this ship editor then? Should we have a look? 
Um, yeah, let's build a ship. So, you know, we can draw, right, like this. Let's just draw, I don't know, I'm making this up. This, I've been thinking about this for a while. This might turn into a total disaster. Um, it never does, mate. If it was me, I would always draw the same thing. <laughs> But I don't. I don't have. I, I just have one, one yeah. thing. Whereas you, you draw the Starship ability. Enterprise, wouldn't you? Yeah, um. that would be all I would do. And then I try and draw, like BSG, and I'd fail because I'm not that good. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So what I'm doing is basically, um, you can draw. You can just draw normally with the symmetry line turned on, and you can expand your ship. And this is this is like freehand drawing, right? Um, and by pressing the R key, I can rotate the shape of what I'm drawing with, right? Nice. So I can also. Yeah curve in my edges and give them nice sci-fi corners. And at any yeah. point, it's a deferred construction system, so none of this exists until I click the confirm button, and then it, it you know, that makes it so. Do you want to do the voice? Hull's, Hull's looking good. Yeah, Hull's it is, good. isn't it? It's nice how it and, improves, isn't it, with each, with each iteration, you know? And it's one of those things where, you know, God, it's hard to do that, to yeah. make that work. <laughs> you know, because we've got to do, you can do whatever you like, and, and the hull kind of comes out. But that particular one, maybe maybe you've jinxed it or something. But no, I have not. Good. No, I have not. We've, you know, uh, we've spent a lot of time. I mean, we've we've demoed earlier versions of this where this was just blue box and didn't have yeah, any artwork yeah. at all. But it does, it already evokes a ship, doesn't it? You know, yeah, I think does, there's something does. about the symmetry line that helps with that. Um, yeah. And you can, you know, you can yeah, move this yeah. if you want and build something new over here that's symmetrical. If you want to go, like Star Wars is quite big on um, asymmetrical ship design. Asymmetry, yeah. Which I always think looks really cool when it's pulled up. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so I can, I didn't really mean to go this way, but I guess we're doing it. So, you know, all well, again, in. you know, coming back to, to, to my, my inherent lack of creativity, <laughs> every time I go and watch a new sci-fi <laughs> film, right, yeah. or play a new sci-fi game, I'm always astonished about how they find that new look. Yeah, you, I know. You know there's, a, there's a new way of doing it, whatever that's going to be, and it always looks cool and exciting. And You don't, so, um, you don't have to just draw it all freehand. You can also switch into box tool. Um, and the box tool lets you do this kind of thing, right? So you can, you can now build larger areas immediately. So you're not drawing freehand anymore. We're now drawing in sections. The freehand tool is brilliant for modifying your ship. Um, but if you want to build something huge like this size and you've got a design in mind, um, it takes a long time to fill in, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Um, but we, we learned. I think this is going to be, I think it's not going to be the, it's not the last time, I think, that we're going to take our cues from what our community tell us. You well, know? This is the whole point of early access from yeah. our point of view. That's right? right. The whole point of it is is to try something, get it, get it as close as we can, then put it out there and, and get that feedback. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's like... How does how, how does this work? What do you think about this? I mean, you find out pretty quickly, you know. They're merciless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's important as well, right? That's important because yeah. otherwise you wouldn't know that, and then you'd build the whole game. It would go out there, and it would, uh, yeah, you know, right. all of those mistakes would you kind would, of aggregate. You would launch, and it would be 10. like, oh, it's, it's crap, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you Good didn't, work for the last ten years. You but, didn't. You didn't yeah. give us a box tool. Why didn't you give us a box yeah. tool? <laughs> Well, yeah. it's worse than that. They wouldn't even necessarily know that they needed a box tool. They would just be like, ship building is boring. Yeah, yeah. It didn't, didn't really work. I tried to build a ship and it was really difficult. Um, oh, this is looking quite cool. I'm quite liking yeah, this. Yeah, it's looking good, mate. Yeah, um, I'm liking it, yeah. I'm thinking maybe, maybe like this. I don't know. Um, yeah, so this is just the exterior, right? So I, I've kind of made it so you, you, you focus in, right? And at the moment we are, you know, we're focused in on the, on the exterior of our ship, right? Making it... Getting the shape right, getting the feel of it right. I don't really like that. That's crap. Let's, let's do that. That's better. Um, but at some point, you know, our 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 crew have to go inside, don't they? There isn't. There's no. In, there's no interior to this ship yet. Um, so if we start moving along the modes, if we go to this next mode, it's called floors. We'll see the inside of our ship, and the inside of right. our ship doesn't have anything currently. Uh, we have to carve out the space inside our ship, right? So using the freehand tool, it looks like this, right? And you can see floor starts to appear. Nice. Um, so, you know, from the from a non-editor view, that is what our ship currently looks like, right? Just oh, that's a, cool. I like Just it. a giant like that, blob yeah. of metal. Um, yeah, and we yeah. can look at it from our... This is the exterior of the ship, which we've already seen. Um, so if we go back to our editor and start using the box tool, we can just do... We can just be lazy and go like... Ugh! Like this, right, yeah. Like just carve out huge areas, um, but we can also do. We can also be a bit nicer than that. Um, so that, well, I can. I'm going to use that to quickly flood fill 
the whole floor area just to give us an just to give us space. So now we actually start to have a bit of space right, for things to go. Um, but you'll notice that some of the some of these interiors are a little bit hard edged, you know. Yeah, like yeah. Some of these corners. So I can improve those with my walls tool. Again, by using R to rotate, I can start to change the shape of the interior walls, all right, and start to give us a little bit more. Hmm, that's not looking quite right. Let's go for this and this, you know. And so we start to get those forty-five degree edges. If we were just if this was our ship, we we're going to be small and nimble. Um, mm. which means that we're going to be great at evading incoming fire, right? I mean, we'll evade rocket fire and gunfire, but we'll probably be quite lightly armoured. So taking a hit from a big cannon is really going to screw us over. Um, mm. um, but I've already built... like these, So these, these edge spaces here are kind of like our critical equipment locations, you know? These are where all of our weapon mounts are going to be um, and yeah. all of our sensor mounts. Um, and the forward-facing sections are, are almost certainly going to end up getting used for railguns and forward facing weapons and stuff like you like when you once you play the game for a bit you already start thinking like where things are going to go you know yeah um and, and I, I mean that's as, as a combat vessel right but there's other uses you might want to have a shuttle you might might want to have a mining ship you yeah know, those, right. those kind right. of things but you know this the layout for this probably not the best for for those kind of applications looks a bit wary yeah, it's not a bad. It's not a bad starting location. Maybe we need to change its shape. I think we'll come back to that later. Maybe we need a front section, like a saucer. <laughs> Call the lawyers. Call the lawyers. <laughs> so um, I can do. So let's should, should we bring some people on board? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get get a crew on there. Because we're in creative mode, I can instantly spawn any piece of equipment in our ship. Right, it's unlimited. So I can go to this spawn menu. Um, and here's a list of all the equipment that we have available to us in our game. All different types of guns, drone bays, industrial equipment, all the supplies that we need, they're all here. Commodities, um, yeah. So um, I can build a docking port, right? So a docking port is the location where shuttles can dock with our ship yep. um, and people can get on board. So I'm actually thinking, I actually want to put yeah, it Yeah, I was thinking that. That's <laughs> better, yeah. That's probably quite a cool location for it, isn't it? Yeah. And it looks like it yeah. was meant to be there. Yeah. That's great. So um, if I go, we're, we are orbiting a sort of starbase, right? There is like a sort of... Oh, right, look at that. A defensive starbase nearby over, over this planet. Yeah. So um, we can bring crew over uh, to start, uh, start being on board our ship. And if I go to the trade menu, so this is like, the trade menu is kind of the same list of equipment, right? But this is the game interface. This isn't really creative mode. Right? Yeah, because okay. I can buy things from here or I have unlimited money, so it doesn't cost me anything really. Uh, but but it's finite resource, you know. There isn't unlimited of everything here, and not every piece of equipment will be available. Um, okay. But I can hire some crew. Um, so let's bring over five crew, um, and let's bring over five spacesuits. Um, it's fairly obvious why we need five spacesuits, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, I, if you don't understand <laughs> why you need spacesuits in the vacuum of space, then um, perhaps you should be on TikTok. Than oh, watching, watching you're, starting, you're starting a fight there. <laughs> All right, so we've got here's our here's our first astronauts and in uh, arriving in our ship. Um, they can't really do anything yet because there isn't really anything here. Um, so we, I mean, we can alternate between using the spawn menu to build things immediately um, and altering and using the trade menu to buy things in a more game-like way. Um, right. Let's um let's let's do a quick setup, shall we? Um, let's go for um, some, rea some, some reactor yeah. cores. Um, going some engines, I was going to say. but And some engines. Let's put these in. Do you want them here or here? Or both? Who knows? I, think I love your, your rigorous affinity to engineering language. So you've got a small, medium and huge <laughs> tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just haven't done the large yet, that's all. Right. Um, <laughs> huge. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, well, the huge one is huge. We don't need one of those, but I think I might have this. And let's go for a fuel loader. So um, engines and reactors, for anyone that's watched any previous videos, our engines and our um, reactors all need fuel, right? They all need this sort of sci-fi fuel um, in order to power up. Um, so let's let's order some from our trade menu, shall we? Let's go here and order like a stack of fuel. Um, and while we're at it, we'll get some of the resources that we need. Right, so that's going to come in on the shuttle, and our crew. So will why start did you order in. those rather than spawn them? I, 
I can do either. It doesn't really matter. I just right, want our so crew. Just... To, I just want our crew to start doing things. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's do. Let's, so it's telling me that the, this delivery zone is already jammed up. Right. We don't have enough space for the uh, for this shuttle to fully unload everything that we've ordered. Um, so, so even now we're understanding the limitations of our first design. That's right. We don't have enough floor space. That's the problem. I haven't given us enough floor space. Um, I'm going to carve out some storage space here. Um, so that that so what I've done is I've carved out an area saying this is for storage of cargo, um, and my crew will just immediately begin moving all that stuff that we ordered to that location. Right? Yeah. Um, right. So let's get our engines and reactors running, and let's go for. Let's uh, draw some pipes like this. See, I, it took me a while to, to figure out you, this, the idea of the loader, but the idea of it is that you've got a fuel system, haven't mm. you? It's not just fuel. You don't put fuel into a reactor not directly, or put no. fuel into an engine. You, you put fuel into a pressurized fuel system mm. and your loader is the, is the and this is how I think of it, is the, is the pressurization yeah, device. It's, it's the like pump, the fuel right? pump, right? So this is yeah. the commodity, right? This is commoditized yeah. fuel. How do you get yeah. that commoditized fuel into that reactor? You put it into yeah. a fuel loader, which pr which pumps it out into. Um, well, we have this we have we have this schematic overlay now, which is like the sort of structural. It's not structural. It's the functional design of your ship, right? And the yellow line is a fuel pipe connecting yeah. the fuel loader into those reactors. Um, and in fact, it's the same fuel needed for our engines, which are off currently. Yeah. And you can see it's marked here. So I can extend that exact same pipe, um, like so, and they will start to receive fuel as well. So if we go yeah. back to our uh, non-schematic view, their fuel, in, these also have a buffer of fuel inside them, um, but they also need electricity to run, hence the flashing red power lever, um, yeah. which is what our reactors are generating. So it's all a little bit symbiotic. The reactor and engines always work together. Um, yeah. Which is good, which is complex, complexity, how it should be. It's the starting point, definitely. So if we run power cables out from our two reactors and connect them together, and then connect them up to our engines, we'll find that our engines are able to start up as well. So this is the same thing, right? We've, we've, we're, not, we're not connecting a reactor to an engine and that's the end of it. It's, there is a energy grid, there's an electricity grid running yeah. throughout this ship, isn't there? That's right, that's uh, right. In the same way that there's a, there's a fuel a fuel network and, a, and an oxygen network and mm. an oxygen network would need a loader as well uh, to pressurize your oxygen system. That's right. Um, and so because we now have functioning engines for the first time, we can actually move. Um, so um, we are in creative mode, but we're still in a star system, right? We're still here. The simulation is One running. One quarter impulse. <laughs> One quarter impulse, I sir. <laughs> there we go. So. Um, so for those people that haven't followed our game before, tactical mode is sort of this DEFCON-esque abstract view on, on the system that they're in, where we issue our commands to move the ship and where we um, conduct the business of war, right? where our weapon systems are controlled. We don't have any weapon systems currently. Where our maneuvering is done, where our navigation is done, um, and where we can see the schematics and positions and layouts of all the other ships that are around is it not it's still very cool as well to look at yeah it it's is. one of the things i love about this game you know just how many different views you've got quite a the, few views on, on the same yeah, thing quite i like a lot it, of different you know views, it's yeah. really rich yeah and if you don't uh, this is we're currently kind of in interior ship mode really which is why we're looking at it like this but if i mm. click on this compass up here to disable camera tracking you'll see that we now have a completely separate um, view on the star system, whereby our ship is being moved around separately, so I can issue yeah, movement external commands. view. Yeah, this is very handy for combat and things. Do you know what I was saying earlier that because we're quite small and light, <laughs> we are quite a dumb looking. Yeah, you're ship. really you're really um, going, aren't you? Yeah, but so we we already have. So if somebody was firing at us right now, a lot of the shots would be missing, because this yeah. kind of hard maneuvering makes this very difficult to hit. Um, and, and that's uh, presumably your evasion counter. Yes, on the on the right hand side. That's there, some right. Sort of, some sort of uh, measure of success of your yeah. evasive maneuvers. Now, what happened here? Our engines and reactors have switched off. Why? Power cut. Your reactor has cut out. The fuel supply has been interrupted. Did you notice that the the fuel pump, the fuel tank that was in this loader, ran out, and then our crew brought over another one? 
No, I didn't notice that. That was happening while you were talking about uh, evasion. Um, ah. So, because this loader loads fuel out of this canister, right? Out of these canisters. When the yeah. canister runs out, there's no fuel left going to the engines or the reactors. So you have a power cut on board, um, which isn't good, you know? That doesn't seem very good. We need another loader. You, you could do it with another loader, all right? But because you were saying earlier, this is like a sort of, this is a, it's a system, right? Now, I already built this fuel tank here, but didn't connect it. Ah, okay, okay. So if I, you don't really want this. This is how you get fuel out of a, you know, a commodity into your system, but you don't really want this to be the main source of fuel for your system. Yeah. Um, so if I pipe in this this medium tank, it'll immediately start filling up with fuel, right? And that's coming from this fuel canister. So what, so what's happening now is that that loader is pumping the fuel out of this this canister into this tank. Right? Okay, so we've got a buffer, a huge buffer, right? And because they'll then load all the rest of the fuel tanks in. Yeah, right? yeah. Until yeah. this tank is now the main source of fuel for our system, because I think we always wanted it to be. Um, like there are different levels to building your ship, you know, starting with the most basic setup that works, going all the way to like the bigger uh, giant ships that we'll look at later, where um, you know there's a lot more consideration gone into how things work. It's space. <laughs> you got a bit, of a bit of a bee in your bonnet there about something, right? I did, yeah, no, all right, yeah, the bottom of the ocean, yeah, whatever. But anyway, um, so yeah, obviously decompression, right? It's always, always going to be a thing for whatever reason. You can have a, yeah. a fire on board your ship. We talked about that before, and it blows out um, your hull. You get a hull breach and your whole thing will decompress. Mm. So this is why ships have, or spaceships have, uh, this kind of setup, right? Subdivision of space. That, yeah. Yeah. But the subdivision of space obviously makes it less efficient to move around. Yeah. Uh, it These does. are all factors. Yeah. Uh, it gives you the ability to compartmentalize areas, you know. I mean, I think that we kind of, you know, we, we, we want those moments when you, when you, dis th there's like five people in here and it's on fire and um, there's a hole in the hole and you seal this door shut, you know. Yeah. Seal the damn door, damn it. We're going to lose the whole goddamn shit. The problem shit. is, you know? the problem you've got there, right, is the door doesn't have a window in it. So you, so can, you can see, see your them comrades. Banging you, their you fist. You have to see the, <laughs> their hand, right, <laughs> up against it as it drags down. You no. Know? Tell Jimmy I love him. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last tour. God, it's my last tour. That's it. I was going home to my wife. <laughs> have you? Has this ship got a name? Not Wind yet. Maker. Go. Let's That's go back to the to editor, that. and you click up hey, here, 19. right? You click up here where it says new ship, and you type in Widowmaker. Widowmaker. That go. was, I think that was ship a submarine author. film Mark. with Liam Neeson. And um, yeah, do you remember? Have we spoke about that? By Mark and Chris. Hey, hey, I got my name on it, even though I haven't done anything. It's just like my life. <laughs> Mark. Chris. <and> I'll take that. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, I remember that well. Yeah, it's uh, it was good. Um, yeah, those because it's because those are interesting choices, aren't they? You know, that idea of yes. like I'm going to let yeah. that compartment go, right? Because what I need to do is I need to evacuate all of the air from that compartment to put the fire out. If I don't put the fire out, my engines are going to explode, the fuel lines That's are going right. to light, and we're done for. So That's although right. a few crew are going to suffocate in the process, I, I don't think being space is a particularly nice way to go. Um, it's better than the whole ship exploding, isn't it? That's right. Those are the tough decisions you've got to make when you're yeah, captain. Exactly. The last starship. Should we? Um, so yeah. So in terms of where they live, there is a concept of there are a concept of decks within our ship, and I think at the moment we kind of have three distinct layers to our ships. Right. We have the schematic layer, which which you can think of as under the deck, you know. Right. Like the pipes and cables, the equipment layout. This is underneath, and you can you can kind of see it like under the floor. Like yeah. semi-transparent. It's kind of like a grill, right? They're 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 working on a grill. Yeah, that's right. Grill or, or... So they can get access to it easily. Um, and then there's the ship layer itself, which is where the game is primarily focused. You know, the engineering side of the game. Um, and then there's another whole level, which is like the habitation deck. 
Um, so the habitation deck sits on the on top of your ship. It's like the top deck, and it's where right. people go to live and sleep. Um, with the caveat that they don't really do that yet. Um, it's it's more like the capacity of your ship currently. Yeah. It's like how many people you can have on board. Um, so in the editor, I can go to habitation and start to build um, a habitation. Symmetry's off, isn't it? Yeah. Symmetry's off. So I can build a habitation deck uh, like this, say. Uh, and again, it's deferred construction, so nothing happens until I click confirm. And then we get a zone, right? Flashing red because currently no one can get access to it. Um, okay. But it looks like that from the outside, right? So that yeah, is our that is our habitation nice. zone on top. That's where people live. And it just it you know. it sings habitation, doesn't it? Mm, it just it does. like you know immediately that that is that is where the people are. Because, yeah. I, you know all the all the windows. And it's also a glorious Ports, weak portals. spot in our ship as well. Mm. You know, it's an it's a weak unarmored part of our ship. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have this little set of stats at the top. You know, the the value of our ship, um, the mass, the toughness. As we add more habitation deck to our ship, say I wanted to, let's, let's go mad with our symmetry, with our asymmetry, sorry. Um, if I expand habitation like this, our toughness decreases and our mass increases, right? Ha the habitation deck makes our ship weaker, right? Because it's sort of like a, it's like a sort of weak livable component with bits of glass and things like that. Yeah, you know? making it ha um, heavier. But what's capacity? So capacity is the, is the crew capacity and passenger capacity of our ship. Currently zero, because I haven't yet made this... There's no ladder up, there's no stairs up to this... Um, oh, okay, okay. So it's there, but you've not, so if I go, you've not connected it. Right, so if I go to spawn and find the ladder... Um, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere inside our ship, we want to build a ladder up like that. All right, so it looks like that right next in the game to world. The engines. Yeah, right <laughs> next to the engines, exactly. Um, and then, um, so you can see we have space for forty. Crew, oh yeah, nice. Crew nice. or um, or passengers. Yeah. Um, this is quite a cool one. This is one that I've been making. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, this, yeah. This is the one I've been testing out creative mode. Like just to give you an idea, this is like a much bigger ship than what we were just playing with. But I haven't really finished it, you know. Like it's yeah. still it's still really the basic cell. Um it's just that it looks so cool, doesn't it? Look yeah, how cool it, it looks. You know? Here's some ships that I've uploaded to um Steam, and here's a bunch that I've subscribed to, made by various members of our playtest community. Right? Nice. Johnny Struggles is a name that shows it repeatedly. Um, yeah, I'm starting good. to see some other ones show up. This one looks quite cool. Inverse smart one figure. I haven't really looked at this one. Um, there you yeah, go. Yeah, it's cool. Look at that. That's wicked, isn't Whoa, it? Whoa, that is badass. <laughs> Much more of a warship, I think. Yeah, yeah. Bristling. That's cool. Let's give it a bit of that a... That is cool. Bit of a spin. Full impulse. You could, just, you, you could just fire it up and fly around and fight it. Brilliant. Yeah, which I think is quite cool. Like, you know, from, from, yeah, it is cool, view, yeah. from the point of view of being the game makers, seeing ships that people have made, you know, in our tools is actually really cool. Um, and then getting to play around with it and stuff. Yeah, maybe this is the one that we should try. Yeah, let's try it. Let's give it a go. It's unarmored, so um, uh, that, that will be interesting. Yeah, it's by, um, so if you look in the editor, you can see it's by Ed the Loon, inverse, Ed the Loon. Mark, inverse, inverse Mark 1. Yeah, it's a cool looking ship, isn't it? I think we should put it, it to its places. Cool. So I can tell I can tell that we're quite heavily armed, right? So we've got, so in this game, all of our guns follow a directional a direction of fire, right? So you can see he's got cannons and rail guns on this side. And if you zoom out, you can actually see their field of effect. Yeah, it's nice, it's These nice. These are the rail guns. These are the cannons. Um, and he's got, looks like he's got the same on the other side. And then on the forward array, he's got that. Right. So, you know, you can see, you know, don't, you never have Quite. full coverage, you know? No, no, that's it. Even, even with you, that, there's gaps you, there. you have, you have effective directions of fire and you have ineffective directions of fire, you know? Um, so if we take the ship and go to our sector map, uh, we'll see that there's some hostiles marked on this map. If we go yeah. there now, the game will generate for us an enemy force, which should give us a good challenge. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. And this is, that's easy to say, and it's taken us a long time to get that to work, you know? So well, essentially, because... our, our ship is assessed and valued, um, and, you know, our defensive capabilities are assessed. And then we have this concept of the ship library, right? Now, do you know what a ship library is? I can hazard a guess, but I think you should explain. <laughs> the ship Exposition. library is the library of all the ships that you've made and all the ships that anybody else has made that you've subscribed to through Steam and all okay. the ships that we've, sh that we've um, included with the game are all in a giant library. Um, and so the more ships that get added to the Steam Workshop, for example, the more varied our combat encounters will become. Because if you subscribe to a ship in Steam Workshop, you can play as that ship, but you can also run into that ship in your universe as an enemy. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And it's, you've got to get that right, because when you allow anybody to build any ship and you want them to be able to not just build the ship, like we're not creative mode is a separate mode, right? We want you to mm. be able to interact with our world. That's right. The yeah. things that you do, you have to, there has to be balance, right? There has to be a way in which you can say, well, this isn't OP, right? Mm. It's, it's, there's actually a threat which is going to be equal to this. And I, and I think that's what the ship library provides, right? Yeah. This attempt to assess the, uh, the, the weapons, the defensive capability, and then provide a, an enemy mm. that's suitable. That's right. And we also use it, I'll show you another place that we use it before we jump into that fight. Um, I've set a course for this other shipyard. I've no idea what's going to be there, but I know roughly what will be there. Um, so let's do a jump to there. Um, so if we go okay. to tactical view, look at what's here, right? These like are shit. This is a Raiden Mark II, right? Yeah. Directly from the Steam Workshop. Um, where is it in the list? Raiden Mark II, nine million credits. So you can see it's actually fully equipped. It has no crew, it has no resources, but it's ready to go. Um, for um, and then here's another one. The Swordfish, right? This is only 370,000 yeah. credits because it doesn't have anything on board. It's like a sort of a blank slate. Yeah, yeah. You can also buy this, which is, this is meant to be like a template, you know? Right. So if you, you, you the idea is you buy this and you go straight to the ship editor, right? Because yeah. we're yeah. at a shipyard and at a shipyard, the ship editor can modify your ship to your heart's content. We also have this, 5 million Colossus. These are, all, these are not ships that we've built. These are ships that our playtest yeah. community have built. And as they as they add to the ship library, the game gets richer. You know, mm. game fills. Um, but we're not going to do any of that. We're going to go to these hostiles. We've got four enemy ships, and we're already so, under so attack. So this is totally Straight, generated, right? This is completely random. I had no idea what we were going to get. So we've got two launchers. We've got this thing. Well, this is our enemy. Right, this is our enemy coming towards. And there happens to be a mining vessel here, which is not hostile, and it's just mining its own business, mining this asteroid belt. <laughs> but it's also having a pop. They're coming, mate. They're, oh, Jesus, they're already there. Yeah, Jesus, fuck. We're going we're gonna to fucking die. Um, what was that? Was, you've taken right. loads of damage already. What was yeah. attacking you? These guys. All right, let's slow time down. It's all right, don't panic. Don't panic. I'm a bit panicked, I've got to be honest. I know what I'm doing. Um, so I've detached the camera. I'm now controlling the battle from this exterior view. I'm bringing around my cannons so that I can take out their guns. Taking a lot of fire. There we go. That's the first one down. Nice one. Who's next? He just got there quite quickly, that's all. So what I want to do, I actually, because he's peeling off that way, I want to move away from them. I don't think the ship has any... Repair drone. Oh no, it does. Right. I can order my drones to repair our hull. Um, so you'll see. I've got the, many repair drones, I think, but just a couple. Here's our repair drones, and they'll start patching up the exterior of the ship. Right, that'll help us. Um, so I'm going to stick with. No, let's do. Let's do this. See. He hasn't got any. He's, he hasn't got enough. Are you going to get your ass kicked? Yeah, yeah, we are going to get our ass kicked. It's all right. I can make it work. Hold on for as long as you can. It's fine. It's a glorious last stand. He's... No, no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. He doesn't have enough ammo. He 
He didn't. He hardly gave us any ammo. <laughs> right. I've got a good line of fire on that guy. No, he's gone. How many were there? There were four, weren't there? There's two left. There's two left. I think we're okay now. I think that's. See, I can now. I can now um, take these guys with our long range well guns. Yeah. Precision strike. It was just that beginning of the battle when I was busy yakking, you know? And I didn't quite have my eye on the ball. Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, real, in, our, in our game, real guns are like a sniper rifle, you know? Yeah. Real guns are not an especially high damage weapon. Like, that's a real gun impact. Just leaves a little mark on the hull. But it's really designed for a precision attack, you know? So what I'm really trying to do is to take out this gun turret that's facing in our direction. Okay. Like, like you've got this like good smoke. tempo, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is now. That, now that things have second. now that things have slowed down a little bit, you know, that initial uh, bombardment was a little bit tough, wasn't it? It was. It came in. It came in hot. I love the way that I love all these four chasing weapons. They're they're cool. We don't see th th these cannons have run out of ammo because the person that built this. We were singing their praise earlier, Ed the Loon, right? Thanks, Ed the Loon. You only gave us. We've only got six shells left. Right. <laughs> so in the, in, the, in the weapon systems of the game, cannons, cannon shells are kind of your main damage dealer, you know? Right. Like your biggest area of effect damage, like the thing that really punches the hardest. And railguns are like a precise strike weapon, very long range, but not really the sort of thing that's going to blow an enemy ship up. It just puts a hole right through the ship. And yeah, then the gun right. turrets are like a close range splurgy thing, but the gun turrets are really these PDC things. They're more like a defensive system, you know? Yeah. These are right. really more designed for taking out fighters and missiles and things that are close. Um, but I think we've got the measure of this battle now. Um, yeah, there's only one left. I'm feeling more confident. <laughs> you had so no, it was hairy for a moment. So right? little it's faith hairy. in me. Well, you see, this is the point of the, of the ship this library the system, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it should be a challenge, you know. The, the, I try to make it so that the game can, uh, you know, one of our engines is damaged. You see that? You notice that one of our engines yeah, yeah. is a bit weak. Yeah. And um, we're now travel. We're now burning too fast for our repair drones. They can't keep up. So I'm just going to slow the ship down and let our repair drones do their thing. How are we doing? Yeah, this is fine. Let's do I'm gonna disconnect the camera. Bring our cannons to bear upon the enemy. Direct here. There you go. He's done. That's it. He's done. He's done. We've done him. So we get our reward financial reward um, and the combat rating increase and, oh look at these poor guys <laughs> oh. <laughs> not looking too good it's not looking good for you mate not looking good for you death doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints <laughs> oh that's lovely yeah thanks mate. we should salute the uh the fallen the noble warrior yeah we so we got yeah. a thrashing there i yeah. mean we got we took 50 percent hull damage there from that initial volley of rockets um so our repair drones they'll do their best right but you can see that their their repair is not completely clean you know yeah. it doesn't it doesn't bring the ship back to full scratch 100 percent ship shape and bristol top it's just a temporary duct it's a patch maybe. it's a patch yeah um, and so oh, our, look at that. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, and so our um, our damage will never reach zero through this method. You know, it's always a patch. So in order to, in order to properly repair, you have to go to a shipyard and pay yeah, them okay. to repair it to pound out the uh, actual damage. Um, on board, I don't think we suffered too badly there. Nobody, we don't have any deaths or anything. Um, but yeah, so that was an interesting battle, wasn't it? That was interesting, and that was quite. Yeah, this is still quite a small ship. It's a heavily yeah. armed ship, um, and it's very fast and very manoeuvrable. So we were able to dart around the battlefield, and you can see we've left a bit of a trail of destruction. Um, but uh, you know, we're, this is not a heavy hitter of a ship by any means. If we came up against something much bigger, we would really struggle to deal with it because it's unarmored. You know. So our exterior yeah. is fundamentally quite, quite uh, uh, unprotected. Um, so if I tell my drones 
If I instruct my drones to uh, gather salvage, you'll see a bunch of repair drones. Th these things that were repair drones, they can also gather. Um, and so they all head out. And because those ships dropped a load of useful loot, like bullets and things, you know, and so they'll pick that they'll up pick and bring up, it back. Pick those up and jack, jack them in. Yeah. And that looks like, from on board the ship, it looks, it looks like that. And so you can kind of, you can restock a little bit, you know. I'm always, yeah. always been, been keen to have this sort of, there's like a transition, isn't it? There's the exterior where your drones live and operate. And then there, there are these drone bays are kind of the interface, you know. And materials yeah, get right. come through the drone bay and your crew take over on the inside. You know, it's like there's all these different levels of simulation that are occurring all at once in the game, you know. It's kind of cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. So the last Starship demo is available right now to play on Steam. So head over there and, uh, and jump in. If you're one of our awesome play testers, thank you so much for helping us out, creating all the ships and telling us uh, what we need to do next and helping us fix the bugs. Creative mode is currently available on the test branch. So you can download that. To the play testers. To the play testers. Mm. Just sorry to be a pedant. <laughs> Do our playtest community have access to the new, it's all singing, all dancing new ship editor with its much improved new interface. You're better. Than, you're better at this than I am. And obviously the Steam Workshop because they've they've been helping us to test Steam Workshop as well by just by nature of uploading all their ships. There's something quite fundamental, isn't there, about the desire to make a cool starship and then share it. Yeah, I think. I think that's we're we're tapping into a powerful force there. Yeah, I think. that's it. I think we're going to see a lot of um, interesting ship designs once this game really gets going. Yeah. Well, that's it from us. Enjoy Next Fest, and we'll see you next time.